so I feel like the number one question that I've gotten about makeup in general, like how I do my makeup, is people always acknowledging or like saying how flawless or smooth or airbrushed my foundation is. And they're like, how do you do that? So I'm going to show y'all how I do that. The really important part that is going to help anyone is that you need to know your like skin type and your problems, I guess, with your skin. So for me, I have a lot of pores. We're trying to diminish them, but they're there. And that is like my biggest problem with my skin. So I get a pore filling primer. So you gotta know like your skin, your biggest thing, and get products that help that problem. So um, that is going to help you tremendously because you can use the exact same products as I do in this video and like you would still be like, why is my skin still not like hers? Because you may have a different skin type than I do. So find out your problem. Like if you have a lot of redness, like if you have rosacea, then definitely get like a green primer that helps to um, neutralize the redness etc etc if you have oily skin I have oily skin so I have I'm very extra and I use two primers um I use a pore filling primer and then I go over it with a it's like a reduced shine basically a mattifying primer so those are the two primers that I use because that's the problems that I have with my skin so definitely know your skin type or the problems that you have with your skin because that's definitely going to play a role in it I start with my pore filling primer and before you do your makeup, this is just a random tip, you should wash your hands because you're going to be touching your face and like, especially if you like just touch your phone, you would think that like, oh no, they're fine, they're clean, but if you just touch your phone, which you probably did, wash your hands, just saying. I literally carry my phone with a washcloth from the bathroom from washing my hands to my beauty vanity because I don't want to touch it. Anyway, wash your hands, wash your face, and moisturize. Any moisturizer kind of helps. Like if you don't want to prime, if you're like primers are crap, cool, don't use a primer. But if you could just like throw on a moisturizer and then wait like 10, 15 minutes, that's even gonna help your foundation like adhere to your skin better. So that's also a tip that you can do. If you don't feel like buying another primer or like an extra thing, and you're like, that's way too much Madison, then just moisturize. I use the Poreless Putty Primer by e.l.f. I'm obsessed with it. It's like a jar. First of all, I don't put this all over my face. I just put it in the problems where I, the places that I have my problems. So like with my pores, I put it right here. That's like the main areas is like right on either side of my nose. do my mattifying primer which is the soap and glory one heck of a blot primer and then I put this where I'm oily which is right where I just put the previous primer my husband is he always tells me to stop <laughs> like making the face that I'm making whenever I put my blush on because I'm like He's like, you look like you're from a, out of a horror movie. Like one of those creepy like young girls like smiling at you. So I do it on purpose because he told me not to. <laughs> and I also put it on the center of my forehead and on my chin as you have just seen. So now that we are all primed, we are ready for the foundation. If I have like any blemishes, like I have one right here. At this point is when I conceal them and then I put my foundation on honestly it depends on my mood like if it's like barely anything like this these aren't really that bad I feel like they look worse on camera so thank you but that's just a little tip like if you have like a big pimple or a big red spot um, I do that before I do my foundation 
So that's just an extra step if you wanna look more perfected, I guess. And like focus it right over the red spot and then slowly blend it outward. Like I'm just slowly bringing out the edges. So you can tell that like most of the product is still in the center over the pimple or the red mark and then blend it outward. Foundation time. All right, I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. I use a brush. You can also use, and I also use, a beauty blender. You can achieve this with either. The only thing that I recommend is with a brush, it really does depend on the brush because I've used some foundation brushes that are terrible and like they do a horrible job at blending out my makeup and it's like I know it's not the foundation that's patchy, it is the brush that's making my foundation patchy. So Morphe brushes I highly recommend just because they're affordable and they're pretty good quality. So I use the Morphe M439 foundation brush and it's so, it's, I love it. Don't like go to town and start like blending out your makeup like that okay what i do is just you want to press it into the skin so i just dab you're gonna see my lovely faces <laughs> so just stipple it onto your face don't be like pulling it because then it leaves streaks so don't do that Also, by you just doing this, it gives you more coverage than pulling it and like thinning it out. So if you want extra coverage. And like please go down your neck as well. Like just like quick like go like this just to like, even if it does like match perfectly. Just so there's not like a line, like a straight. Now for concealer. I love concealer. I don't know why, but I like love concealer. I use this uh, Tarte Shape Tape, aka the best concealer in the entire world. And you put it in a little V, like you see all the beauty gurus doing. Follow right there. And I put some on my forehead. You do this and this just to like balance out your face so you don't. I forgot to take off my mascara. Anyway. To balance out your face so you don't have too stark white under your eyes. Again, just stipple it out. Don't be pulling and stuff like that. And then once the product is mostly blended, like as you can see, it's like not fully blended out. I focus it right there where I want it. And then I will stipple downward to blend it out. If there is anything that you get from this video, anything, please get that, I don't care who you are, if you don't blend your makeup out, anything, your foundation, your concealer, your eyeshadow, anything, it's not gonna look as good. Blend until you have carpal tunnel in your wrists, okay? Just keep blending. If you don't, if you think you're done blending, then just do it for another minute. After I'm done focusing on like the point where I want it, I'll go like this and like connect it and keep blending. You wouldn't think like blending out your makeup would make your makeup look more like flawless or whatever but it does because then you can't be like okay this is where she put her concealer and then this is where her foundation stopped and then you know etc etc so and then because i have my freaking mascara on and if i go over it black is going to be like all over my face i'm going to use this little brush and i just like tapped it onto the wand to get some product on it and i'm going to go over my eyelids and this is a great way to prime your eyelids for your 
eyeshadow if you're going to do eyeshadow even if you're not um eyelids tend to be discolored just from like the veins because it's super thin skin so you can see veins and stuff through your eyelids like a lot of the time so this will make it look a little more cohesive and finished I put extra concealer on like right in here because my the inner corners of my eyeballs are like blue once all that is concealed we now have this product <laughs> now that we did you always 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 for the like 99.9 percent .9 of the time always do your liquids first anything liquid if you have <laughs> Honey, if you have like liquid bronzer that you normally use, now would be the time to do that as well. I don't like do, but I don't normally do that. I take this small brush, it's by e.l.f. And it's so old that the thing wore off. So I take, because I am oily, like I said, if you're not super oily, um, you can just use a basic like powder, like a foundation powder that you like. The only thing about foundation powders is that they are a foundation, so they are going to have more coverage um, than just like a setting powder. So I recommend setting powder unless you want more coverage, then you get a foundation powder. <laughs> okay, so I take that. I use a Rimmel London one. It's just a translucent matte setting powder. I take this small brush and set in places that are bound or more likely to crease so like right under your eye where you have like those creases i take it and i just press it right into the skin under there and like concentrate it right there to set it and i look up so i can get those um wrinkles unwrinkled so that you can get the powder in there basically where i put my concealer is where i use this brush to set so it's more concentrated. Like with the oily spots, it's because the reason why your foundation normally breaks up is because you're oily. And your eyelids, set your eyelids. This is a huge help when it comes to eyeshadow. Um, if you do this, what I just did, conceal your eyes and set them really well with a powder. It is going to make your eyeshadows blend out so much easier and a lot more flawlessly because they're not going to be like catching on like the sticky wet foundation. And then I take a fatter like this is just a straight powder brush and then I just set my the rest of my face. Jack hates and I just stipple this on just like my foundation I kind of put it where I want it and then you can't really tell in the video but my OCD self can tell in person again I just take I don't have anything on it but I take my bronzer brush again and I'm just gonna go over where I put my bronzer to kind of blend it in with the blush Yeah.